inside the Red Earth Production Studios for another edition of YBM Cast, powered by Game 7 Baseball, Game7Baseball.com. And today we got our uh, tournament wrap-up show. We're going to talk, we got a, we got a couple different subjects, but we're going to start off with uh, Game 7. We're sorry Dave couldn't be with us today, Mr. Penning, uh, out to... Uh, and we'll catch up with him next week. We're going to have the this weekend uh, the state championships will be um, a little, little, little. There it is. Streaming. I had to figure out the word first. So okay. Streaming the uh, 14U championship out at the state game seven state championships. Um, we got some high school playoffs. We got a couple GAC teams still in it. Yep. Love to hear that. And uh, so we're going to be following that this week, and uh, got a lot going on, man. A lot going on, and the weather is is uh, starting to get. You know, well, I shouldn't say that. It's supposed to rain tonight, but weather is supposed to, for the most part, uh, you know, yeah. stay clear for us to finish out a, a, our summer strong. With, yeah. With with play, so absolutely, I'm excited. How you doing? I am doing well, good, except for good. my allergies and the dirt in my eyes. I'm 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 doing pretty good. And we'll get to the 14 U's. You had a good weekend. Congrats on a good Thank weekend, you. man. Thank you. We did. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to start, though, uh, the Memorial Day NIT Classic from uh, Game 7 Baseball. Uh, We had the 8U championship bracket. Uh, The, you know, and when you look at these, there wasn't some bad scores. This one was tight, 16 to 15 there. Uh, Columbia said, I mean, uh, the old slugfest at the 8U, baby. Let's go. Love it. But uh, 15 to eight on the championship game, the Wildcats over the Rawlings Tigers. Coach Mark's squad uh, uh, took the championship in the eight U machine pitch division. We also had uh, a nine U division, uh, St. Louis Clutch right there, Nike Redbirds, uh, Midwest Rebels, Montgomery Bombers, SI Predators, Southern Illinois. Mm-hmm. I love seeing those Southern Illinois teams coming over. There's some good squads over there, some good programs. You see, that. yeah, and um, I, and I don't know if they're large organizations or just a couple of little small teams, um, mm-hmm. but it seems like all of those guys know, kind of know each other. So I feel like it's like an independent type uh, mm-hmm. group, but um, they're having success over in this side of the river, and they and uh, I've I've seen at least five or six teams in the 14 age group come over. So yeah, yeah, they're so, bringing them exactly. Uh, the Nike Redbirds have won the championship there uh it was a another slugfest 19 to 13 uh the redbirds over the st louis clutch uh then you had uh so i mean i haven't seen the nike redbirds around and whatnot that's the the group over there in fenton uh mm-hmm. actually not fenton i think uh uh we've been over there with uh that group before and i'm trying to remember where that was brentwood 314 yeah, 314. I was waiting. I was, I was letting you think it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate that, bro. So there there you go. It was a good uh, good division there. A lot of good ball games. Uh, some big scores, but, you know, the, 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 the hitting was good. Pitching maybe a little bit and you still need to work on. Yeah, just a little. Just a little. That's all right. Moving on to the 12U uh, division. Uh, some good squads again. Uh, Max Rep. Max Rep Bats. That's a new program, evidently, because I hadn't heard of them before. But Max Reps, Bats, uh, Black, 2-0, Midwest Rebels, 2-0, Under Armour Prospects, 2-0, Gators, Beerman, 2-0. And there was 12 total teams in here. You have uh, you had a tribe team in there? Nope, different. I'm, I'm, I think That's that was Jackson Tribe. Yeah, Jackson something. Tribe. I, I saw a younger group. Um, it looked like Jackson's Tribe. Okay. Okay. It's interesting because we first started, it never really had any many tribe teams <laughs> in any of these tournaments. And all of a sudden, you know, you have an Illinois team that's there. You have some Southern Missouri teams that are there. And it's like, uh, I didn't know you had this many teams. I was like, I didn't either. We don't. Big, <laughs> Completely different color. Big field here, 12 teams. So the champion, So there was the championship bracket and the silver bracket. Uh, the championship bracket came down to the Under Armour St. Louis Prospects. Uh, beating the Max Rep Bats Black 6 nothing in the championship game. Um, and so there you go. The uh, other two semifinalists, the Lake Area Rattlers and the uh, Midwest Rebels were in the semifinals there. And, and then give you a little bit uh, in the silver bracket there, the Express took down the St. Louis Nike Redbirds in the silver bracket. Uh, let's move on. 13U. 
13U had six teams, Bombs Away, Illinois Gators, Cromer, uh, Moco Tribe. That's a Illinois group, again. Uh, St. Louis Prospects, Midwest Glory, hadn't heard of them. Where's the Midwest Glory? They're out of Republic, Missouri, coming up from Springfield. Oh, very nice. And uh, Gamers Academy. Um, looks like the Illinois Gators, Coach Cromer squad, took down uh, Bombs Away, 8 nothing in the championship game. A couple of good semifinals. Bombs Away beat uh, St. Louis Prospects 8-6. to six. And uh, the Illinois Gators, who won the tournament, uh, defeated the Moco Tribe 8-5. to five. So some good, solid baseball, that 13U right there, right? Enough to keep it exciting. Yeah. That's yeah. for sure. That's some good, solid games it, it, right it there. It feels like you're, you know, you're a bloop and a, you know, uh, an error or a walk away from being able to tie a ball game when, it, when it's like that. And you expect these kinds of things to happen. And when you get late in a tournament, um, you, know, you run out of some of your arms. You know, and so uh, <laughs> that could happen very easily, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the biggest one of the day, I mean, 16, 16, 14 new teams. This is a tournament that you really want to be part of, uh, a group, uh, because it gives you so much um, opportunity to see where you're, what you're up against, who you're playing. Now, I know you're not playing everybody, but you're going to play a pretty good field. Of teams, right? Yeah, and I, I really looking at some of the early scores for the most part. Games were really competitive. Um, you know, the the I think the tournament itself, uh, Aussies was packed this weekend. I mean, there was no parking. Uh, you have people parking in the grass, um, <laughs> me included. Um, glad I didn't get no tickets, but um, the, the fields were loaded, and the support from the parents. Uh, it was amazing this weekend. I didn't I didn't hear no you know bickering from. Uh, parents to umpires, uh, you, you know, or, or between coaches. Mm -hmm. um, coaches took care of their teams. I, I really enjoyed. Um, I really enjoyed this age group this weekend, and and it was fun to watch trying to uh, see the layout of how the tournament was going to go. So uh, we played late. Our, yeah. our group played late, so I had the luxury of seeing what everybody else was kind of doing. Um, so that was a that was a fortunate for me that I got to play late. Um, on Saturday. So the championship bracket, you guys got in the championship bracket. You were in the finals against Gas House. But, I mean, uh, early on, um, you guys played uh, Donnie Horn squad again, the Midwest Futures. You beat them in the uh, quarterfinals. Uh, Gas House uh, Mora went down to the 14U Pirates baseball. Uh, Coach Bosta's Gas House team beat the Naturals to get into the semis. And, um, uh, the Rawlings Tigers fell to the Midwest Rebels, so that's what it was. Gas uh, Gas House beat uh, Midwest uh, five to one. Uh, you beat the Pirates six to one to get in the championship game, and it got away from you in the championship game. Basta took that took you guys down there. That's okay. It, I, I it like happens. how you used uh, "got away from you." We were shellacked. <laughs> well, I try not to be just. I would say that if it was if you weren't say I would say that about anybody, right? <laughs> it, you know, it is. It, it is. Uh, Basta has a good, yeah. Basta has a good group. Um, they they, they have a really a team. talented team, um, pitching wise. I, I think uh, their infield is uh, their shortstop is is awesome. He's a great kid, a great player. Their center fielder, uh, I, I feel like can play all three positions in the outfield. Um, he is fast. Uh, he can move, and uh, that's a that's a fun group. So if you ever get out there, uh, get to see Basta play. Just stop and watch some of their young yeah. men play because they got yeah. size. Yeah, um, and that, I think his number is sixteen. Um, I, I could be wrong. He's I think he hits three for them, right hander and, and uh, man center field, and um, that boy is a stud. And I like the fact that you know again this is a double A team, and I think they are a very good double A team. They can compete at, at with some of the lower level triple A teams very well. I think, um, and I think they they've probably played in some of those tournaments. Um, but they are a really good double-A team. They are. I actually had a conversation with Coach Basta after the game. We were, we were kind of walking out. You know, everybody went to do the pictures and stuff like that, and his, his team came back to get his stuff, and uh, we, we kind of walked out together. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we train with Gas House. They're inside of our facility at the hitting zone, and so um, I've seen enough of him <laughs> you yeah, know, to, to yeah. kind of know what he brings to the table. And I asked him that question about that, and he said, you know, we have played triple-A events, we can't make it this deep in the weekend because we don't have the depth 
to compete at that level. He goes, that's the unfortunate part because we are probably one of the better double-A teams here. Right. And, and obviously it shows. I think he's been in four yes. or five championship weekends, yes. right? And more yes. than two or three of them. So, yeah. um, but I don't shy away from that. Don't think that he's playing down to, no. to, to win trophies. That's not no. his goal. His, his kids are good, but he goes in, and if he goes to triple-A, uh, he might lose that first round. He might lose that second round. And, and so he's just a 500 club there. Not sure if that's good or bad, but he cannot make the run for his team as deep. And they can still lose. They can. They still um, give up runs. They still have, um, you know, fourteen-year-olds on their team. Um, they just happen to have a few kids that are really, really talented. You know, and I think that's an interesting. When we talk about depth, we're so we we are concerned about, and it's it's a lot of it's pitching depth and things like that. And I think the difficulty in that is when you start talking about pitching depth. You're putting a lot of strain on kids um, and trying to pitch at maybe a level there. You may have a, a couple, three kids that can throw at that level, but then everybody else. So we're, are we doing a service to them? Are they learning? Are they having success? They're still, I mean, they're winning 5-1 in these things. And, again, here, here's the other part of this. Here's the Illinois Gators, right? Coach Yates' team. We saw them. Very good squad. We faced them. Yeah. Early on in the season, and they're good. And they were in the silver bracket. So I think we have to be careful. And that's where we leave it to the guys in the tournament, the tournament directors. I think they've done a good job with the 14U. It's been very competitive. That's one of the things I've enjoyed. Justin and I have talked about this. We haven't had a bad championship game, have we, son? No, we've had great championship games at the 14U AA division. Teams playing well, good, solid players. It's been a lot of fun broadcasting these championship games. And that shows you that there is talent up and down. Is it, you know, and, and that's why we've had this discussion about a AA, AAA major. So when we start doing this, I think it's I, – I, I really like what I saw because you had the Edwardsville Spikes and, and Gators playing in the um, silver I, bracket. I, I stayed I, – I was there for most of the weekend. You know, we had the two games on Sunday, and then we had a delay, and then we had to play that championship game. So I was kind of just walking around the park, just being nosy and, and watching some of the other younger uh, groups play. And I, I think what got us to where – um, we were able to play in that championship game is I had fortunate enough that my pitchers threw a ton of strikes. We got ground ball outs. We got big strikeouts and key moments, but I didn't have to use all of my pitching. There you go. Right. And so I did walk into the championship game with still one of my better arms to go. But once that was done, I had nothing else left. Right. You know, because right. I, I let, you know, our first game of the tournament, I think uh, that was a big game, but he's thrown a complete game shutout and had a couple only given up a couple hits. I'm not gonna let that. I'm gonna let that ride. Absolutely, you know, I that, have to give it to how that much, young man. How much confidence does that gain for him? A ton, and it and it did. And you know, but again, what happens there with depth? Right. Go back to right. depth. Right. When I take that kid out and he's thrown, you know, six innings of baseball, I didn't put him out at first base and right field, where his secondary position, where he plays it very well. That takes a, a good defensive player away, and that's kind of what happened in for us in our championship game. Mm -hmm. We had guys that were working really hard, but um, we just did not have what, you know, Coach Basta had. Right. Uh, and I'm sure there's some other teams that probably felt like they deserved to be in there, but we beat them. So, yeah, um, exactly. And, 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 but yeah. we beat them with guys throwing, pumping strikes. We had, it was just consistent strike throwing this weekend. And um, my defense had made some nice plays. I pushed them very hard this weekend, yeah. uh, mentally, physically. Um, you know about what it takes to be good teammates, and and they bought in by the end of the weekend. Um, it's just go. unfortunate we ran into a buzzsaw, but um, <laughs> I, w I was that, super excited about this age group. I really am. And that it's buzzsaw, cool. that buzzsaw was Gas House. Congratulations to Coach Bossa and his group. Yes, uh, for the good. championship game. So also one last thing, you know. Uh, well, we'll finish this up here. I want to I want to give a shout out here real quick. Uh, there was also the uh, Quincy uh, Q-Town up there. Um, give you some quick results there. They had an 8U uh, tournament up there where the Avengers took down bombs away 12-8 to in the championship game. And then you also had in the 10U, 
Uh, they had, uh, let's get down here to it, uh, O'Donnell's Baseball, which you've talked about there. Yeah. I always think it's named after the pub <laughs> on the corner, but O'Donnell's Baseball. They have uh, a good group, man, even softball. <laughs> it's just a fun group. Forsyth Fire, they, they went down to O'Donnell's 18-10. to 10. So that was up uh, in Q-Town. And then the one last one from the weekend was uh, the Turf Series. Uh, they had six teams down there in a 12U division for uh, the St. Jen River Dogs. And uh, SEMO Strikers, we've seen them. Took down Jackson Tribe Black 9-3. Uh, to three. Um, Adidas Athletics were down there. Uh, Illinois, Another Illinois Gators team was down there. So it was a good solid group of uh, teams down there. Uh, playing at St. Genevieve on that turf for Memorial Weekend, and always want we always want to give a big shout out to the Blues. Umpires were good this weekend for us. Um, I, I and on and all four fields that were playing over at Ozzy's, um, and they're very uh, open. So if you have questions in between innings, if you have lineup, uh, you know questions and things like that, they they are more than willing to help. And I again. For us, uh, this is my first year in baseball in a long time, uh, you know, coaching sports and being able to go to, you know, uh, the directors that were running that event that day, um, you know, going to the trailer uh, and asking particular questions or trying to soak up some of the AC. Um, it, it was uh, more than willing to answer. Yeah. And I, ju I just love that, that they take time to, uh, you know, with their customer service. Very good. Trying to treat you well. There you go. One last thing before we get out of here, we want to talk about this because it's coming up, um, and all these all these young kids that we're seeing here and whatnot are going to be playing high school baseball next year. A lot of them in this area, right? And uh, you know that we we saw this weekend at the 14U, and a lot of these AA players are going to be contributors to their high school, especially the GAC. A lot around GAC is probably one of the strongest, if not. Uh, the strongest conference in the state. Um, I'll just say one of the. I won't go too far. Fair enough, because you still got to play, right? Yeah, Super you got to play. Well, conference-wise, up and down is what I'm talking about. I think it's all three GACs, though. Yeah, no, I, is that I, what I agree. Is that where you're going with? Or? I mean, the whole of the scope GAC, of it, from, yeah. because you have Class 6, Class 5, and Class 4 represented in the GAC from the north to the central to the south. And, uh, I mean, there are just... And, and it shows because uh, Fort Zumwalt e East punched their ticket uh, to the state semifinals uh, coming up this weekend, beating Parkway Central 7-4. That's where I was on Saturday. I, I started my day. I, I, I was working a little bit. We went out to the uh, American Legion, was doing the tournament out at Blanchett Park, their freshman. Uh, went out and did some video work with them. And we got some stuff coming up with the Legion. Cool. We're looking forward to it. Um, then I tripped on over to, uh, Francis Howell, uh, saw four innings of the Howell Central Howell game, which Francis Howell won three to one. Congratulations, Coach per Perkins. Yeah. Punching his ticket to the class six semifinals. That was over Howell Central, correct? That was at Howell. But, but against Howell Central? It was against Howell Central, and I want to throw that out there. Uh, that's why I was going next. Howell Sorry. Central. No, you're Stole okay. Your thunder. <laughs> Coach Beckman. Congrats on a big season. Braden Rubel threw well, you know. But that lineup that was in that, I think it was in that uh, bottom of the third inning. Those guys fought off some good pitches from Rubel, hit some flares, you know, that blue. The, they were blast. just – and it scored those runs. Uh, I think the hardest hit ball, I mean, was McCutcheon, and it was an out. He hit it almost to the fence, but it was caught. And then they just had a couple solid singles, but then blew in that middle of that lineup, and they scored three runs. That had to be a uh, heck of a game. It was three Neptune, to one ball game. Was Neptune that was versus Rubel, ne right? Naputi. N Naputi. I don't yeah, know Bryson I Naputi. Neptune. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Naputi threw a complete game, allowed one run, um, and uh, it was just it was it's what a semifinal should be, gotcha. or I mean a quarterfinal should be. Two good teams played well, uh, well played. I left in the fourth inning after the fourth inning because I wanted to get over uh, to Zumwalt East and watch Parkway Central, and that was another good game. The thing of it was, though, East, East uh, their, their, their bats are awake. They struggled there in a little bit when they, they're pitching. They lost some pitching. They kind of were at 500 through the f and, and they weren't hitting as well. 
But man, through this playoffs, uh, they are hitting the baseball. They're hitting the ba- They're good at bats, um, and they beat uh, a very good Parkway Central team, seven to four. And man, uh, Servio, I think, or Servo, Siervo, I think, is how it's pronounced. Uh, their shortstop, that kid can rake. Well, I'm not going to give you my answer because I thought. Uh, Whatever his name is was Neptune. <laughs> Neptune, <laughs> so, yeah, Neptune. yeah. I've played him like four times this year, and I probably should know that. And I'm trying to remember the catcher's name. Aha, uh, that kid is a stud, dude. I got a former uh, high school friend, teammate that his son plays on East, and so I get a chance to kind of follow their mm-hmm. their journey this year. And there was some struggles, like you said early on, and they just turned it on at the right time. And I had to ask the question though: Would you rather turn around and play right away, or do you want this week off? You know, uh, talking with the coaches, none of them like the week off. Yeah. And it has led to some conversation across Facebook by a few coaches in the area that how about cutting the season a little bit shorter and playing a similar regional, regional as college? Yeah. Well, that was one like of the... Like, got to lose two in order to get bounced. Yeah, that was one of the... Uh, that was one of the... That's one of the big things about... Once you, I don't think they're really minding taking away the sectional, but once you play districts and you get in, that can that be a three game set starting on that Monday and playing? I think it's a great idea because you've got then you're going to see who's got the depth to really make an impact. And I mean, then you get into the single elimination in the or then I think it would. I don't think they could do a, a, a double elimination like they do in the College World Series. You don't think so? I don't know. You're, you're, you're going from eight, right, and you have to lose twice there. So uh, that's easy to manage because you have multiple fields mm-hmm. that you can use, and, and it's a quick turnaround. You play maybe a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, turnaround Friday or Saturday, or maybe that's that Monday, that, and you can start to get into your sectionals there in a bit, or your quarterfinals. It's a best of three. It's a supers. If it's a super regional. Yeah, because you're talking about tournament baseball, right? That leads to your final four. Yeah. I, I think that's an interesting thought and process. And maybe your final four is one and done. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe you could still yeah. do it a, a double elimination there because a the team would have to play the if game. It's a lot more games um, that you have to put on that schedule. But um, the one thing that I think would end up having to happen, especially, and and do you do that only at the top two schools or top two classes? Because you got so many schools in these other uh, classes. I mean, you've got six. You have sixty-three in class five and sixty-four in class um, six. So I think it's feasible, but then you're going to have to put them at different venues. Well, you play your one seeds, get your your eight seeds, and you you get home field advantage, a true home field advantage. No, I'm talking about if you if you wanted to do the state final like oh, that I, I, once you got there, you're going to have to do different venues because right now all classes are played at that one venue through this week. So I think there's the other issue, and I think it's an interesting question, but well, maybe, I, I believe maybe that's what would have to maybe happen. Maybe you don't go to a double elimination. Yeah. You get you you either you, you win a game, you get to play in the championship game, you lose a game, you're playing for third or fourth place. And that's what they do now. But I like the idea of the reg- kind of that that uh, that three game set to get there. I I, I, I do. I think I like that would that. be I think that would be a blast to j- one, it builds a rivalry. Oh, um, man, yeah. you know, you, you like if, if you have a smaller uh, draw or or you got the guy that's got the one big arm that can just you know beat you on any given day, but you don't—they don't have three good arms. I mean, that does expose teams, um, but that's also part of the energy and the anxieties of going into districts is because you do have that and you have to play your best. You just can't—you just can't um, show up. You know, it's like Arkansas no, softball can't. just uh, lost to Texas, and you know Arkansas softball is ranked like three or four in the country, and Texas was unranked. So they just lost in Supers to go to the College World Series. Whoops. You got to play a game. But that's it, a three-game series. There you go. There you go. Three-game series. Exactly. And so I think it's interesting. But we want to say congrats. Uh, Fort Zumwalt East is playing uh, Platte County on Friday. I'm not quite sure of the times just yet. Um, Francis Howell, for their trouble, gets uh, Liberty North. <laughs> Are you, so, are you envisioning a slugfest, or do you think this is going to be like a two-to-one, you know, four-two ball game kind of thing? 
I, I don't know the names of the uh, the guys pitch that pitch. Uh, I mean, uh, for Liberty North, I know uh, Kevin Mulder talks a lot. They got a really good pitching staff. Um, he thinks it's probably one of the top lineups, if not the top lineup, offensively in the in the state. And he put Hal in that three or four place in there. Um, but Naputi, that lefty, I mean, he has been. Does he have one more inning? Because I think you're going to see Naputi on the mound against Liberty North. That's I, what I, I you think. You almost have to, right? He's, I mean, he has pitched you to this semifinal, and I think that's what you're going to see. And then you got, uh, you still have Rouser and Break and Seek for Championship Sunday. I mean, so I, I don't think I don't think he's given set. up more than four runs in a game, has he? I, I don't, Naputi, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't believe so. I, I think we scored four off of him. Um, and in the, in six or something yeah. against him, but I don't think he, against West Holt or any of the good hitting teams that are in that conference. I don't think he gave up more than four runs. And then on the other Let side of earned. that, though, man, you got Lindbergh, who, I mean, Kevin Mulder was talking about Lindbergh being there. So you got another Metro St. Louis team there uh, playing. Um, oh, who beat Kickapoo? I'm trying to remember, Blue Spring South. Tommy Lapour, you're going to have a tough time beating him. So, listen, it's probably two of the best games that you're going to see in high school baseball anywhere in the country. There's some talent. Anywhere in the country, folks. That is how good these teams are. That's a, that's a, that's a bold statement, <laughs> anywhere in the country. Absolutely. Oh, man, California, Florida. Absolutely. Because it's about high school baseball and team baseball. It's not just going to a showcase and you've got this array of talent. These kids have been playing all year together. And not to mention, they're all – there's so – how many Division One kids are – I mean, Tommy Lepore, I believe, is going to Tennessee, man. You know, I mean – are they going to I'm be, just saying. When he gets there, is he going to arrive as the defending national champions? <laughs> Tennessee is good, man. They are good. So that's what I'm talking about. It's not like these are all chump change dudes. No, these think, are these are legitimate. I mean, Jake McCutcheon, I'm watching him play the other day. I mean, he's just gone his game to another level. Offensively, defensively, he looks so good. He's going to Missouri State. That kid's going to play at Missouri State. Yeah, I, I think he'll his bat's immediately going to play. It'd yeah. be interesting to see where he belongs on the defensive side to see if he doesn't get moved. Um, uh, I think he he's got there. the arm to play shortstop. I don't know. We'll see because I mean his hands the range, are great. The quickness could be. I, I, could I see be. third base uh, in his future. That's a possibility. I, I can see that Missouri State's going to put a little size on him, mm -hmm. and um, you know, just experiencing that college atmosphere a few times. It's it's um, that's what happens. You know, every I mean, every college wants to recruit shortstops, right? <laughs> yeah, because then you have the athleticism to to really do a lot of different things. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm excited for the for this area, though. I think there was I thirty something Division One athletes this year in the GACs or something crazy like that, and uh, to just to see some of the names from Hal and uh, the future is is such a bright. Uh, in St. Charles County. I know that there's obviously some in Kansas City. I have a, a, an emotional no, tie I understand. to St. Charles we're County just, baseball. Yeah. And we're going to be able – and what's fun about this is we saw 16 teams in the 14-year division. Where are those kids going to be? And we'll be able to see those kids over the next few years in high school. That's why I love this. I, I really do. I enjoy this. It's a tournament wrap-up show. We're talking about tournaments. Game 7 baseball, as always. But we got the big tournament coming up, and I think it's awesome. I'll miss you next week. Uh, we're not. We're, we, I got softball this coming weekend, and the next I'm um, actually off a weekend, um, and then we get back up on June seventeenth. That we'll see you at the uh, NIT National World Nationals. World Nationals. Yep, World Nationals. Um, we'll that's another deep field, and it's uh, loaded just like this one. So. I got two weeks to uh, build off of this and, and uh, hopefully continue our, our uh, progress. Much success, bro. We're trying. All right. Yeah. Folks, that's, uh, that's it for today for the Tournament Wrap-Up Show. My buddy Mitch Thomas. Thanks, bud. Always. Thank you. We'll, look, uh, we'll check us out. We'll keep watching. We're going to be covering. We're going to be down in Springfield uh, covering the tournament down there. So uh, hit that subscribe button. 
watch, uh, follow us on social. We got Instagram, Twitter, um, and uh, Facebook. Facebook at Youth Baseball Midwest. Instagram at Youth Baseball Midwest. Our Twitter is our Red Earth at Red Earth Prod LLC. That's uh, our production company, and uh, we're looking forward to it. So make sure you check us out. Keep, we'll keep you up to date. We got some great stuff coming up. All you pitchers, keep throwing strikes, and you hitters, good advice. And we will see you next time. <laughs>